Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Bandai's High Metal Aura Gult toy. This toy was released in February 2016 for 6,800 yen. Inside the box you'll find a set of lasers for the whiskers on the chin, and then a replacement set just in case you break or lose those. Then you have the two main beam cannons for the top of the head, as well as a display stand taped to the back of the tray, a display stand adapter, and instructions. As you can see here, the toy can do the flying pose that the Regults sometimes used in space. If you are having a hard time with your display stand holding up the toy, uh, there is a screw right here. You can try tightening that. Here is the display stand adapter. It just clips on on the base of the toy. So I'm going to just go ahead and unclip that now. We can then bring down the legs, and I want you to listen as I do it. Nice clicky leg action. And then we have our feet. And while we're looking at the feet, this is a high metal toy. There is metal. It's used in the joints. That's the only place you'll find the metal. The feet joint joints allow for a great deal of articulation. Here's your heel and your toe, which has two points of articulation for just the toe. You have your knees, which are, uh, again, there's a metal joint in there, and it allows for that range of motion there. You can't come back too much with it. You can twist at this thigh swivel, and obviously at the hip you can come way back, as we saw in the flying pose, and way forward. The joints are so tiff, stiff on this toy out of the box that you can actually do kicking poses and have it just stand on one foot. You also have a little gimmick where you can just pull out and get a little bit more aggressive angle outward on the hips, which is neat. You do have a small waist swivel. It's not quite enough for you to do some of the crazy running and turning around poses that you might be able to pull on a Kyoto or might maybe remember seeing at some point in some sort of art somewhere. So you, you, can't, you can't pull that off. That's kind of the one limitation. The other articulation limitations, I guess you could say, the head lasers aren't articulated and neither are the chin whiskers. And obviously, since you get replacement versions of these guns, you know that they're a little bit uh, easily broken, so you want to avoid pressing up against them and hope if your toy falls, it doesn't fall on those. Moving up the head, these are articulated here, but they're just on a ball. So if you pull them out too far, they will just pop off on you, but you can see you get them pretty straight, or you can have them more in the uh, angled out like you might remember from some of the line art. The boosters on the side swivel maybe a little bit too freely. Uh, same with these guns on the top. They swivel a little too freely and they are removable. You won't need to remove them because there's no accessory other weapon that comes with a toy. Uh, but there you have it. So there's articulation and a very quick rundown. Here is a quick line art comparison with the Toy Nami vinyl collection on the left and the Bandai High Metal R on the right. You can see Toy Nami did a little bit better job around the eye and the thickness of the legs. On the High Metal R, the eye is a little too conical and the legs are a little too thin. But I'd also point out that this isn't the only line art for a Regult that exists and oftentimes the line art does look more like the High Metal R. So between the two, I would just say both are excellent representations of the line art. The High Metal R also has nice cavities in those front forward beam cannons and the top of the head lasers, which gives it a nice barrel look. High Metal R also has better painted apps. Uh, I would say Bandai did a very good job sort of between the lack of detail we would see in the cartoon itself and the uh, abundance of detail that we would see on line art, just striking the right mix of markings that they actually painted on the toy. All right, so let's talk about gimmicks. On the back of the toy, there is the hatch that the pilot would get in and out of. That is anime correct. You may remember the old Matchbox toys have a front door and a big window here. Uh, that's because the old Matchbox toys were for 118 scale figures. That wasn't really anything to do with the show. So, 
you would have this hatch, you just pull straight back. Now note, you can't see any little hinges or anything. Everything's very nicely done for good details on the back. Just pull and then swing up. And then you can see there is actually pilot cockpit area detail with inside. I'm gonna to try to take a flashlight to see if I can help out a little bit. But yeah, so there is a, a nicely detailed cockpit in there. You can't fit any actual figures in there. It, nobody would fit. Um, so it's really just for the gimmick. You might be able to do something like have this open and make it look like someone's crawling out. Uh, but you can't actually put somebody in there. And that's fine because if you did put someone in there, no one would be able to tell because it's not like there's a big transparent thing in the front. At 19 centimeters tall, the Regal toy is roughly 190 scale, depending on which measurement you think a Regal should actually be, and it seems like I haven't been able to find consensus on that. So, at 190 scale, though, it matches perfectly with the HMR releases we've had so far, so that all seems to make sense. And as you can see, everything looks pretty decent there. Uh, and within the show, they were never really consistent with how tall those vehicles were either. Sometimes they were about the same size as a VF1. Sometimes they took three VF1s to move one. So um, definitely a lot of discrepancy there. Here are some previous Regolt toys, probably your other options that you might know. The one on the left of your screen here is the Toy Nami. This is a vinyl toy. It doesn't have much in the way of articulation, but if all you're trying to do is fill in some background space of a display case that, you know, you might not need articulation, so you might want to just spend less money on something that's more static. On the right is the Kyoto, which is definitely going to play better with your even smaller scale vehicles, or your more true 1-100 scale or less. It jives obviously very well with the Reveltech non-transformable VF1 toys. And that has a lot of articulation and some options to it. Uh, but definitely not in the same ballpark as the Bandai High Metal. So what it's going to come down to, one, the Toy Namis are basically sold out anymore. If they, were, if they were still $25 and all you needed was something for the back of your display case, might still be a valid option for you. But given that they are all sold out and usually sell for more these days, uh, the HMR is a no-brainer slam dunk. It's an excellent toy. If you're a fan of the Regolt at all, you should get it. Uh, the articulation is obviously top-notch. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Check out anymoon.com for the full article, and as always, thanks for watching.